All right, thank you for joining us today. And today we have a very special guest. Today we have Karen Brueggemann. Karen is a children's book author who has created The Friendly Fruzzles, which is designed to help children realize their potential and to not give up. She is also a success coach with three self-help books, a planner, and so much more. Today, I would like to welcome Karen Brueggemann. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Karen, I am absolutely overjoyed to finally get a chance to talk with you live. Uh, right. so I first discovered you about five years ago, and I remember the first time that we talked back then. Uh, from what I remember, it was a very inspiring conversation. I think we talked for about two or three hours, if I'm not mistaken. It was a great conversation, if you remember. Yes, I do. Yes, it was lovely. And uh, at the time, I remember your first book that had come out, The Fruzzles, and I bought that book and I read it to both of my kids who were, I think at the time, were about five and two years old at the time. They loved the book. They loved the cover. They oh. loved the story, and, and it was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm really glad that they enjoyed it. Now, so tell us a little bit more about yourself and, uh, and your story. Okay, so um, I started writing at a young age. I basically wrote monologues. Uh, back then, I wanted to be an actress. Mm. Um, so I did that all through middle school, all through high school. I had hundreds and hundreds of monologues. I would write them, and then I would act them out. Mm. Uh, I did that for, you know, I, like I said, I did that for a while, and I loved it. Um, but then I decided to go ahead and change uh, careers, and I went to school for psychology. And of course, with that, there was no time for writing because I was basically writing papers for uh, my professors. So I kind of gave up the writing bit um, and also gave up the acting. Uh, fast forward a few years, um, and I ended up, after you know having kids and reading books and everything else, I decided to go back to it. Um, an idea fell into my lap, and I thought, you know what? This would be such a great book, and it would help kids, and the rest is history. And then the puzzles were born. Man, that is an absolutely amazing story right there. You know, uh, so from what I understand, you, you co-authored this book uh, with your daughter, Brianna, and you had your son, Brian, uh, illustrate the cover, or the, not only the cover, but all the artwork that's inside the book. I must say that is, I love the way that the frizzles look. I, I really do. And uh, so tell us a little bit about that process right there, about co-authoring with your daughter and uh, having your son illustrate your book. Oh, yeah. It, it, I highly recommend it to anybody who wants to do that because it was such a wonderful experience to work with them. Um, so what ended up happening was uh, my son actually originally came up with the character, and it's this little guy right here, Brown Frizzle. Mm -hmm. um, he came up with the character, but he you know, kind of didn't really want to do anything with it. Um, he just you know, had this character, and I thought it would make for a really good book. Yeah. Um, but at that time, I you know didn't have any ideas for it. I just thought at some point in the future, I want to make something of it. Well, then fast forward a little bit, and I was volunteering at my daughter's uh, school, and one of the girls there was talking about how she was trying to figure out what her like talent is. She was so upset because everybody else was getting good grades, somebody else was being super fast, and she couldn't figure out what her thing was. And I overheard my daughter talking to her saying, hey, don't worry, it's okay, we'll, we'll help you figure it out, what, you know, what your talent is. And I thought, oh my gosh, that would be the perfect book idea. And I was so excited. I couldn't yeah. wait to get home and get started on it. That sounds and exciting. I, oh, it was, it was super exciting. And I thought, you know what, I, I want to bring them both in on it. Of course, you know, I have my son do the pictures, which he was thrilled to do, and have my daughter help me with writing it. And it was, like I said, it was just such a wonderful experience. Now, my son, he did the uh, actual drawing, because I, I can't draw anything. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe stick figures. But I did all the um, I, I did all the coloring in of it, and, and that was lots of fun. So highly recommend it to anybody who wants to, to do that with their kids. Yeah, my, my kids uh, both draw, so so my son is really good at drawing. He'll sit down and he'll draw like Five Nights at Freddy's characters, Fortnite characters. I mean, he really does a lot of different things as well, too. So I'm trying to get him into um, into transferring everything that he does on paper over to a computer. So, you know, with a computer, you can do a lot of different things. So when your son uh, was drawing out your characters, what was the idea for that? Did you start off on paper? Did he start off on paper? Was it all first on the computer? How did that work out? Yeah, so he did start on paper first, um, you know, a lot of erasing, um, and then from there he scanned it into the computer, and it would be basically like a very, like, very, very light 
drawing of it. Right. So then he would go in through it. I think he used Photoshop, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. And he would, you know, fine tune it. Um, and then he gave it to me to, to take over for the coloring process. And I had no idea <laughs> what I was doing. <laughs> um, so I had to keep bothering him and, yeah. um, you know, to, to help me with it. And, and it was fun. It was very frustrating. And I think I got like lots of gray hairs <laughs> from doing it because I kept messing it up. And, but it was, it was, it was definitely fun. But yeah. I would recommend, you know, if, I mean, the benefit of doing it on the computer is the fact that you can, you know, quickly take something away or you can change the color really quick and easy. But it, you know, it is, there's something about doing it on paper as well. So I would recommend obviously, you know, doing it first on paper and then transferring it onto the computer. Okay. That's actually, that's a great recommendation. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get my son to do the same thing. Like I said, a lot of stuff that he does on paper, I'm trying to get him into the computer, transfer it over to a computer and ultimately do some animation type stuff with it. Cause I know there's a lot of software that's out there to where you can do animated shorts. And that would be a great idea to get your characters into like an animation and put it out on YouTube. Have you considered that or thought about doing something like that? Uh, no, I haven't. I mean, I would love to, but you know, I mean, I, I just don't know the process of it. Right. Um, even trying to do, uh, you know, more of the Frizzle books, I have a whole bunch that are written. But now right. my son's in college, um, mm -hmm. you know, pursuing his degree. So to get him now to, you know, to, to do more of these books, a little bit more me, challenging it's, now, right? Yeah, it's, he has no time whatsoever. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy. He's constantly doing, you know, schoolwork. So, but I think, you know, I think that's great. I, I would love if I could find somebody who could, you know, make them, maybe even your son, <laughs> he yeah. can, you know, he could be my, uh, my, my future illustrator. So, so during the uh, process of writing the book, uh, was there anything that you, that you discovered about yourself? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, first off, I thought, oh, writing a, a children's book, like how hard could that possibly be? I mean, I, I would read these all the time to my kids. So I thought, ah, that, that's going to be super easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in for a rude awakening. It's it's not as easy as it looks. You figure, you know, you have this, you know, short story, but you have to compact your words. You have to make sure that every word counts. Right. Uh, the mistakes that I made in the beginning, I had uh, way too many words for my story. I think my first story was like 3,000 words, wow. and they're usually supposed to be about 500, three yeah. to 500 for a picture book. Right. Um, so I was really kind of, you know, surprised with that. Um, I was smart enough to go to retreats, conferences, to, to listen to interviews and find out all the stuff that I was doing wrong. Um, the other thing, too, that I learned, which is really kind of cool, is when I first wrote my book, um, after I fixed it and edited it and, you know, and got it ready for publication and, um, you know, put it out there in the world, I was really nervous. I was afraid that, you know, people would say, like, oh, this is horrible. Like, you know, what, what are you thinking, you know? <laughs> and so that was really hard for me. But I was so excited with all the reviews that I got on Amazon from Total Strangers telling me how much they appreciated the book or how much they thought it was wonderful. So that gave me an incredible sense of uh, confidence. Right. And, you know, I learned that, you know, yeah, I, I can actually write. <laughs> so and then, of course, I wrote more books as well. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, I'm glad that you wrote uh, the book, The Frizzles. Uh, like I said, I read that to both of my kids, and, and they truly enjoyed it. They really did. And I'm glad that you got some other books on the way. Uh, um, so what is the primary message in your book that you want to connect, uh, that you want to connect with children? Yeah, so basically I want, I mean, each book is a standalone, but overall I want to say to kids, you know, to, to not give up, to, you know, to believe in themselves. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to write this book for kids. Um, this particular one, you know, teaches, you know, the kids that everybody has something special about themselves. That, you know, just because you're, you know, maybe not the smartest kid in class, or maybe you're not the fastest, or, you know, maybe you're not like me, you're not the greatest artist, but it doesn't mean that we don't have something special within us. Each person has their own special talent, and the kids just need to figure out what that is. Right. So I try to always, you know, convey the message somehow without, you know, shoving it down their throat, um, but to let them know that, you know, they are special and, and, and don't give up. Yeah, you know, kids are really easily impressionable. Sometimes all they need is a role model or a mentor. Uh, do you believe that your uh, character serves as that role model or mentor to young kids? 
I feel as if it, as if they do. Yes, 100%. Um, you know, like I said, with the, with this particular one, um, you know, the the brown character, he goes to wizard to say like, hey, you know, I, I can't figure out what you know I'm good at, and I'm hoping that these that the kids can look up at these uh, characters as their role model, thinking, okay, here's this character Brown, who, like I said, he, he goes through each thing and he tries each thing and he's he's not good at it. In fact, like one of the things he does is singing, and, and he's just mm -hmm. horrible at it. Um, <laughs> and so you know, but but he doesn't give up. He he keeps right. pushing through. And again, you know, teaching kids and having them have that role model of, okay, here's this character that kept failing and kept failing and kept failing. But instead of saying, you know what, I'm not good at anything, I'm not best at it, I'm done, he just kept pushing forward. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that these characters will serve as a role model for the kids to show them that, like, hey, if you keep pushing and you keep trying, eventually you'll get the payoff. Absolutely. That sounds like a great message right there. Now, um, do you believe that you can put your characters in any situation? You know, there's a lot of things that's going on out there in the world. Um, pretty much a lot of situations that can be taught. Um, you know, a lot of, lot of messages that are out there that can be given to a particular scenario or situation. Do you feel that you can put uh, your characters in any situation and be able to teach children about whatever that situation, subject, or issue may be? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I mean, like you said, there are so many issues nowadays. Uh, you know, like for example, bullying. Bullying has always been around, but now, you know, with social media, um, you know, it's magnified by, you know, a lot. So, um, you know, I could take the character and, you know, he could be, you know, getting bullied, and I can show the kids how to, you know, deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not to worry and stress about what people think about them. Um, as a society, we, we do. We tend to constantly worry, you know, am I good enough? Uh, you know, are my peers, you know, are, are they going to be happy with what I'm doing? Uh, the peer pressure. And, it, you know, it's a lot for kids. But mm -hmm. I believe that through the Frazzles or actually even any book, that you know, books just in general, especially kids' books, are great because they teach those messages of, yes. of you know, like I said, of being bullied, or if you're afraid of something, um, a lot of people are afraid of, you know, different things as, you know, first day of school, going to the dentist, going to the doctors, you know, all those, you know, issues that kids have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, one of my next books, you know, that I already wrote is about the frazzle and he goes to the dentist and he's scared and, mm -hmm. you know, because the drill seems kind of scary yeah. and he overcomes it and realizes, oh gosh, it was no big deal after all. So yeah, I 100% believe that. So it seems like there's some really good opportunities in the future for the Frizzles then, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, so you're also a success coach. Uh, so I know the Frizzles has a lot of uh, positive messages uh, within that book that can teach children. Um, and that, I think, stems from you being a success coach. So tell me a little bit more about your career as a success coach. Yeah, so actually, I started coaching back before coaching was a thing. I remember, you know, t talking to people about it, and they're like, oh, so what are you doing? I'm like, I'm a success coach. And they're like, what? I'm like, a life coach? And they're like, sorry, I have no idea what that is. Like, you go out, like, on the baseball field or something? I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I help you with, like, your goals and your dreams. And, and you know, I had to constantly tell people what I did compared to, like, now where everybody knows what a success coach is. Right. Um, but when I first started off, I dealt with entrepreneurs and executives. I helped them with, you know, their goals business goals, personal goals. And then when I would go to, I went to a, a writing retreat one time and one of the ladies there found out that I was a coach and she said, hey, would you be interested in coaching me for writing? And I thought, oh, you know, I, I never thought about that, which, you know, it was, it was like so perfect that the two were gonna marry each other. So I ended up coaching her and then, you know, I ended up getting referrals and coached other people to help them with not only just the writing, but the accountability because I believe everybody has a book within them and, you know, to help them to, you know, to finish their book or even get started with their book. Right. So, yeah, I, I love coaching. I, I still coach. I write and I coach and, and I enjoy both so much because I love helping people. Yeah, the, you know, there's a lot of things that can that can definitely be overwhelming out there within the world, writing a book leading your life, uh, running an organization, starting a business, whatever the case may be. And sometimes all it takes is just that one person with an outside perspective looking in just yeah. to keep just to keep you either motivated or inspired or keep you on track 
or uh, or whatever the case may be. Now, you have some methods that that you have. Is there any particular methods that you would like to share? That you know, if you're guiding, coaching, teaching, training, mentor someone, are there any methods or any maybe any golden nuggets uh, of advice that you would want to give somebody? Um, sure. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing is, you know, of course, obviously, is the accountability. But I also try, you know, a lot of times, you know, people come to me and they say, you know, I want to write this book. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so, you know, what do you want to write? And they'll want to write, let's say, a YA, young adult. And, you know, they're looking at a 70,000 word story. And they're so overwhelmed. They, they want to do it, but they have no idea. So I'll help them to break it down. We'll put it into the different baby steps because I'm all about baby steps. You'll find mm -hmm. with me, it's all about baby steps, taking that step-by-step -step approach. Right. And then I'll also help them to, because we all we get so busy. We, we, yes. and we have this goal, but we don't take the time. So I make them set systems in place. Um, one of the systems that I make them set in place is, I mean, everybody has phones nowadays, and, and they all have alarms on them, and they all have reminders. So right in the beginning, I make sure that they put the reminders on their phone. And then we also, I you know, get them a planner, and I make sure that they stay schedule in the time for writing. And it could be anything from, like, writing for 15 minutes, some people want to do time and other people want to do where they want to write until they have like, let's say, you know, 1200 words for the day. So I try to do things along those lines, but I always make sure that, you know, that they have a system in place so that they actually write because you're not going to accomplish the goal if you don't take that first step. Mm. Speaking of, uh, of goal setting, you have, um, so you got three books that are in the category of self-help, personal professional development. Um, a, a lot of them I'm sure deals with, with a lot that goes along that along with goal setting. So tell us a little bit about your three self-help uh, professional development books. Okay. Uh, I would love to. So, um, it's uh, my, my series is called, I just want to, so okay. each one will fall that. So the first one I wrote, um, I actually experienced a, a bad divorce many years ago. Um, and I was, you know, devastated. And at that time I was actually looking for a book. I was look, just looking for something. I, I, you know, I just needed a lifeline, something that would help me to feel better about myself. Right. And I, I, I wasn't finding anything. And I wanted something that would tell, say, Hey, day number one, do this day number two, do this. Mm -hmm. And I, as much as I searched, I couldn't find it. And you, obviously, like I said, this is going back some years now, mm -hmm. there's some stuff available. But at that time, there wasn't. So what I started to do is kind of come up with my own little step-by-step, -step again, <laughs> approach. That's, to that's, every that's actually a great method to do. You know, if you can't find anything that's out there, then create it yourself. Right, exactly. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my own every single day type, you know, thing. So I ended up doing that. And then, you know, I thought, you know what? This could probably help other people too. Mm -hmm. And so then I went ahead and I wrote it all up and I, you know, had it published and it's, um, I just want to heal my broken heart and it's a 31 day, you know, step-by-step -step guide to, to healing your broken heart. That was my first book. Mm -hmm. uh, my second one is I know people suffer from depression um, and, you know, be, just being generally sad and mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, figure out a way to help people with that. So I wrote, I just wanted to be happy. Um, again, just a, a book to help people with, you know, again, a step-by-step, -step. it's a, you know, step-by-step -step approach, 31 day guide to different things that they can do, you know, every day or just different things that they can do in their life to be happy. And then the third book is, is kind of a little bit silly. Um, <laughs> and you're going to love the title for this one, but it's called, I just want to poop. Oh <laughs> goodness. <laughs> And the reason I wrote that one was because I had a friend and she kept talking about how much stomach pain she was constantly in because she couldn't go to the bathroom. She was always, you know, struggling with it. And she's like, you know, there's no books. There's nothing I can find. And, and again, this is going back a few years. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I thought, okay, she can't be the only one out there who's having these problems. So I mm -hmm. went to, to doctors and, you know, did tons of research to find out, you know, ways to to help people to, to be able to kind of get things moving. So yeah, then that one was, uh, was definitely, born. definitely sounds like a fun title. You know, it, 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 you know, it's like kids, you know, kids think still think farts are funny. <laughs> right? and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of those kind of those types of, uh, kind of those types of titles, you know, people will grab that just out of curiosity. Like, man, what is in this thing? Uh, right. I, I was I was at a uh, Barnes and Noble bookstore one time and I a book caught my eye and I had to stop and open it just to kind of see what it was and the title of the book was called Crap. And, oh, I love it. 
So, so I took a picture of this thing and then I posted it on social media shortly thereafter. And I said, see, so they actually do sell crap at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. I love that. That's so great. And, uh, yeah, so I mean, it's I, I love the title. I think it's a great title. I think it'll connect uh, connect with people. Uh, so speaking of connecting with people, you have a, a few different ways in which you can connect with people. I know one of them is uh, is your website, KarenBrueggemann.com. Uh, and then you have another one. You have a Facebook group here, Step Goal Setting uh, Facebook group. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so that one's called Step by Step Goal Setting. Um, initially, I. Uh, started it to help people again with their goals um, you know people would always you know come to me as you know coaching clients and I'm happy to help them but I also wanted to be able to help the general community and people always have these mountain type goals that they want to achieve but then they get so overwhelmed and so fearful because it's such a big thing so I was trying to show people that if they use a step-by-step -step approach to accomplishing their goals that they can actually accomplish them so with my group, we're there for, you know, support. Um, the, the people, the members are awesome. Uh, they support each other. We applaud each other. Um, there's a, some accountability in the group. So like if somebody's working on something, um, some people feel more comfortable just private messaging me within the group, and that's fine too. But other people will put their stuff out there, mm -hmm. and they'll get the accountability for, you know, like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, and people will hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. I definitely will hold them accountable. Okay. And then I also give like little motivational um, strategies or just like a little motivational phrase from here to, you know, here or there, um, just to, you know, make them feel better about themselves. Cause, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, and sometimes that's all it takes. I know I do the same thing within my books and within my social media that's out there, you know, sharing, sharing motivational, inspirational type stuff. And sometimes that's all that you need is just that, that one little thing just to kind of get you going. Uh, yes. So daily affirmations, I know, is a really big thing. Do you strongly believe in daily affirmations, and do you have any of yourself? Yes, yes, 100%. I believe in daily affirmations. I believe in uh, visualization. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very big on that, um, 100%, you know what I mean? And I will say that when, when you do your affirmations, mm -hmm. I tell people to state them always as a positive. You never want to state it as a negative. You don't want to say, for example, like, you know, um, you know, I'm going to quit smoking. You know, you want to say I am a non-smoking person. Mm -hmm. um, and I always tell people to kind of have like an end date for it. So, right. you know, like see yourself achieving it, but you know, like, don't say like, I will be successful. I am successful. Exactly. Like all your stuff should be the I am statements. Um, but hundred percent agree. I suggest doing them first thing in the morning and then throughout the day if you can. And then right before you go to bed, uh, just, you know, that constant, you know, giving yourself a little pep, you know, making yourself feel better. Yeah. So, so being a success coach, I know, um, uh, so that's kind of my world as well too. I kind of write motivational self-help leadership life and this, that, and the other. Now, one of the things that I strongly believe in is having a daily routine. So you kind of hinted there just a little bit, you know, things that you can do throughout the day. Uh, what does your daily routine look like? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm used on that. I'm used on morning routines as well as night routines. So um, my morning routine basically involves the first thing when I wake up, I drink a glass of water. Mm -hmm. I'm always to hydrate it. I've been told that before. So I drink that full thing of water to kind of get my body going and highly recommend it to everybody. Um, right after that, I get out of bed. I do a little bit of stretching um, to kind of get my body going. Um, I'll do, you know, usually five minutes of stretching and then 15 minutes of yoga. Um, after that, I will write in my journal. Um, I heard a while back, I can't remember who it was who said something about writing morning pages, but it's mm -hmm. basically just dumping all your thoughts onto the paper. So I always do that. And then I think gratitude is so, so important. So every single day, every single morning, I start my morning with, you know, writing what I'm, you know, thankful for. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing that I do, because I want to start my morning even like, like super happy and, yeah. and have a great day. So I always watch a comedian. I go on YouTube uh, and I look for just little mm -hmm. tidbits of a comedian and so I can laugh and, and you know, so you can always hear me laughing in the morning. Um, and, that's, and then that's at night, really important too, is to, to be able to laugh, even if, if, you know, at other people, at least at yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I laugh at myself a lot. Yeah. And then at night I pretty much do the same thing. Um, you know, I don't do as much of the comedian stuff. Instead I do, uh, you know, just some type of 
learning. Of course, obviously I read, I'm, I'm a big avid of reading. So I'm constantly reading like, you know, three or four books at a time. Um, but again, I do some, some stretching and then throughout the day, I also exercise because, you know, got to get that in as well. So okay. but yeah, big fan of it and, and writing down, um, uh, my goals. Um, I have a, um, the planner that I wrote, um, which is the, um, life blueprint planner. And in it, I have my, the, for the goals, I don't know if you can see this or not, but, um, but basically, I'll write down my, I'll look at this first thing in the morning and then again at night. And it goes over like the goals and things along those lines. Because I think it's important for people to always keep their goals in mind first thing in the morning and then again before they go to bed to set up their day for the next day. Absolutely. I, I agree 100% on that one as well, too. I, I do I do some similar things within my day. So it sounds like uh, we're a little bit alike here on how our daily routines go. Um, so. If you had one golden nugget that you could give to somebody that would either motivate them, inspire them, whatever the case would be, what would that golden nugget be? Hmm. Um, well, gosh, that's hard. I have actually a few. Um, <laughs> you know, not, not giving up. I mean, we're, we're so, we, we all are so, this feeling of like, I'm not enough. Um, I'm not going to be good enough. I'm not, you know, that, that sadness that we end up, you know, getting because, you know, we, like I said, we don't feel like we're good enough. So for me, like telling people to not give up. And then the second thing that, again, is so, so important is staying focused on your goals, but not just your business goals, but also on your personal goals. We get so busy in life that, you know, trying to pursue different careers that we kind of sometimes lose ourselves. Um, I tell people to find one thing every single day that makes you happy. I don't care what it is. Just find one thing every single day that puts a smile on your face. Uh, and, and then you're going to have a great and happy life because like I said, we go through life, you know, trying to, you know, basically put out fires and we never think about, you know, taking care of ourselves. Um, I also recommend, you know, like I said, with the goal setting is the fact, write down your goal, you know, break it down into steps, look at it every single day, look at it first thing in the morning, you know, figure out what you need to do for the day. And then in the evening, look at it again before you go to bed. So you're, it's constantly on your mind so that you can achieve it and not say like, oh, because I hear a lot of times, oh, gosh, I can't tell you how many times I hear somebody come up to me and say, oh my gosh, you're an author? Oh man, someday I want to write a book. Uh, yeah. I, all the time, and I'm like, okay, so what are you doing? Well, I don't have time, and it's like, no, you got to make the time. So absolutely, even if it's just a little bit at a time, that little bit will compound over time, and and ultimately end up into that final end result. Yeah, you know, I, you know I'll give you an example. I remember when I wrote my first book, I wrote it very quickly. And then I come back and took a second look at it. And six months later, when I was done editing the book myself, it, it was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was such such a process. But I but never gave up. Um, and that's an absolutely wonderful message. That's a great message because so many people out there get started and then they just never finish. Yes. Some people they get motivated just a little bit and then they stop. Whatever those circumstances, whatever those situations, those outside things, they let those affect them internal, and then they just give up, and then they just quit. Right. You know, they ultimately get defeated. And, uh, and I want to thank you for that, that message right there, because you know, I know for myself, I procrastinate just a little bit, and, uh, you know, and it's very challenging to overcome that. So in, in reference to procrastination or overcoming those obstacles, staying on track, staying motivated, what would you recommend uh, – for someone that is struggling to stay on track, someone who's procrastinating, someone who starts but can't finish, what uh, what would you recommend for someone like that? Um, so there's a couple things. One is, you know, doing the hardest task first, you know, first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. I, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, if, if, you know, when you first wake up, you have, you know, usually a decent amount of energy. And yeah. then as you go throughout your day, you know, obviously we all get tired and everything else. And we're also, again, putting out fires. So if you can, Put even just, you know, 15, 20 minutes onto whatever it is that you want to do. And again, I'm going to stay with the writing. Um, but if, you know, so if you wake up and you, you know, say, okay, I'm going to spend the first, you know, 15 minutes of my morning, make it part of your morning routine, writing, 
and, yeah. and keep yourself focused on that. And then after that, put out your fires and do everything else. But, you know, that'll help you to stay on track. Um, also, if, you know, if you're not a morning person, because not everybody's a morning person, again, I suggest the, you know, the writing it down, um, setting the alarms, setting up the reminders, because again, we get so busy in life, you know what I mean? And hey, you know, while you're reading my I Just Want a Poop book and you're trying to, to go to the bathroom, you can use that time <laughs> instead to, yeah. uh, to, to write. I mean, you know, look, look for times where you can, you know, where you can write and, you know, it might not be first thing in the morning, but, you know, try to make sure that you carve out a little bit of time for whatever the goal is that you want to achieve. And like I said, even if it's just five to 15 minutes, you're mm -hmm. still taking those baby steps, you know, and that'll keep you from procrastinating because it's just, uh, it's just a baby step. It's not this big mountain. Absolutely. It was absolutely motivational uh, message right there. <laughs> Thanks. Karen, I want to thank you personally for joining me here tonight. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day. Very motivational, very inspirational. I am truly thankful to, uh, to know you and uh, to be able to have a great conversation with you. Thank you. And, uh, Man, I'm looking forward to uh, what's coming up on, on the horizon for you. I know you got some great things coming. And uh, out there, if you would like to connect more uh, with Karen Brueggemann, you can do so by visiting her website, karenbrueggemann.com. You can also visit uh, her on Facebook. She has her uh, Facebook group, Step-by-Step uh, -step Goal Setting. And uh, all the links will be below the video here. Uh, so once again, Karen, Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing more from you in the future. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me, and I wish everybody lots of luck with their writing, and feel free to reach out to me. I always tell people, like, you know, I'm, I'm available. Um, and even with my planner, I always tell people, you don't have to buy it. I mean, granted, it helps me if you do, but you don't have to. You can go on my website, and I actually have the template on there, so you can just grab a notebook and, you know, write it down, you know, what every single page is on there so then that way you can see what you need to do so but again reach out to me if you need help I'm more than happy to help in any way I can and thank you so much again for having me and it was so nice to actually you know see you because like I said we've talked before but I've never seen you face to face so this yeah. is this is awesome so thank you yeah thank you all right have a good night and thank you uh, too Everybody else out there, have a great day. Wish you all the best and continued success. And uh, should you need help, visit with Karen Brueggemann at karenbrueggemann.com. Links and everything will be below the video, so make sure you go check her out. Thanks. Bye.